Welcome to PC Woods Kids Tech Talk. Continuing my SFX small form factor build. I've got the EVGA RTX 3060 Ti XE GPU installed in this Cooler Master NR200. Tiny little case, packs a punch with all these other components from Cooler Master, which I reviewed previously. I'll add the link below so you can see this more in detail. After I reviewed this, I also reviewed the ASUS ROG Strix iGaming Micro ATX board. You can see right here with the Z490 chipset packed everything inside of that case along with the EVGA 3060 Ti Xe GPU. Terrific fans, lots of cooling in there with the heat pipes and everything. 1710 megahertz on the boost clock, that's 3% more than the Founders Edition by the way. And uh, lots of, a, of power in here really to get you going with 2K, 1080p, no holds bar of course, and even some 4Ks as well. Now. Being you know, a small little card, this fits very nicely inside of this case. You can hook up four monitors in there, yes. Uh, I'll be uh, installing just one monitor in here just to show you guys what I'm talking about in this build. Now, pause the screen on the specs if you want to see the rest of it. Yes, I am overclocking the CPU to 5.1 gigahertz, that's right. And all these high-end components are really going to help to make sure that there's definitely uh, a smooth results as possible and the maximum. Uh, per, uh, you know performance that we can get out of this now here again are the specs of the board if you haven't seen my previous review on this you can uh, take a quick peek at it yes uh, you know it is last year's model compared to this year's but still it outperforms a lot of what's out there today so I'm very happy to uh, to showcase this to you now on the GPU side of things using the uh, second gen uh, ray tracing uh, technology on the 8 nanometer architecture for the GA104 GPU. You can see that this one comes with 8 gigs of GDDR6 memory. Very nice. And uh, well, what can I tell you? On idle, 35 degrees Celsius, fans are not even on. If we go higher and we run this at full load, yes, it will go to, you know, to 65 degrees Celsius when you're playing gaming. And I'll show you that in a second when I do some gaming benchmarks. Now, Going over to Time Spy on the 3D Mark, you can see there I ran this a couple times. Got about 11,300 for the uh, points, which it considered excellent, and you bet it was. Compared to last year's 2020 high-end gaming PC, mine outdid it. So I'm really happy to to report that. On the Geekbench 5 score of uh, 129K, you can see there the score. Here is how it compared to other GPUs on other systems. So very nice. Also happy to uh, show you how well a small little tiny case can really outperform other machines. Now, on this Lux bar, uh, Lux ball uh, mark, uh, I should say, the HDR benchmarking. If you go into the Precision X1 software from EVGA, it has a little boost clock option. You can toggle that and enable that. That will lock in the boost clock. Might, you might see a, a performance increase on the benchmarks because of that, but it'll also increase the temperature you know, by 10 degrees on idle, at least. I saw that happen uh, as well. So keep that in mind if you're uh, locking that in, okay? You want to make sure that, uh, that you don't keep it and forget. Now, I, I'm going to unlock it, just leave it as it is, and you can see here how my system compared on that uh, Luxmark 3.1 Lux Ball HDR results there. You can see how mine uh, compares to these other results from other people. On the Shadowbringers Final Fantasy benchmark, excellent results on this one. Again, not holding anything back. We're running it on the highest uh, graphic settings, extremely high results that we got back. Very nicely result uh, in just 10 seconds. You can see there the total loading time. Very fast, this machine. On uh, Far Cry 5, well over. 100 frames per second running it on ultra of course you can see right there so uh, strange brigade also same results if I run this at 1080p I get about 200 frames per second on ultra if I run it at 4k it cuts it in half about 99 frames per second okay now on Fortnite, running it at 1080p but on epic settings RTX on everything is pretty much on the highest very smooth eye candy great graphics as you can see here on average with super high results very smooth gaming. GPU utilization is only 65%, which is not bad. Temperatures will hover around the 60 degrees Celsius, roughly. Okay, so it gives you an idea on what to expect. Of course, this is a small, compact machine uh, compared to a large case where you might be able to have different types of cooling. Now, um, 
on another game that I uh, tested the same type of scenario here, Battlefield 5. Again, running it on Ultra, RTX is on um, at 1080p, okay? So 1080p, this is obviously a more power-hungry game, when it, the engine of this game. Uh, 120 frames per second on average, but the GPU util utilization is 98%. Okay, so it's really high on the GPU utilization. But uh, I'm really happy to see that the temperatures only went up about 5 degrees, roughly. So uh, even though it's utilizing it, you know, almost at full load, uh, temperatures were not that much. But obviously power usage was higher at 186 watts of the 200 uh, total uh, board power that it's able to, uh, to do. Now, moving on here, uh, if you're wondering, you know, well, where can I get these parts? I added the links below in the description. But... Keep in mind that I did add a little bit more additional cooling inside of this case. That's right. Believe it or not, you can add more fans than uh, it meets the eye. So even though the EVGA 3060 Ti has two fans, I added uh, the radiator here uh, with two 120mm uh, fans for the CPU, obviously, to give that additional cooling. Then two more fans at the top. You can see the top of the case. I added two 120mm fans from Arctic Cooling. Now, when it comes to pricing, unfortunately, you know, it's, it is out of stock. Um, you can set yourself to auto-notify on uh, Newegg.com or even on the EVGA.com website. You can set yourself up to the auto-notify to let you know when it's back in stock. So that's good to know. The 3060 version of this card has 12 gigs of GDDR6 memory and is priced a little bit less, uh, obviously. And uh, you can see here all these other components. I'd like to thank them for providing it. And uh, I definitely recommend the EVJ card in this case. I'll add the link below again to the previous reviews if you're curious. Comment below, let me know what you think. And again, thank you for watching.